Hey there, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that you all are doing well in the faith. Um, I want to share with you, we're going to go over Ephesians chapter 1. main reason I wanted to share this with you all because of how effective this chapter is and it's just chapter one because i'm going to share with you all what i've heard what i heard um after diligently studying uh verse by verse this chapter what i heard in my dream uh, i pray that we get to know this chapter and hold fast to it especially through our testings through the um fiery darts of the enemy because the enemy will definitely try to come against you on this chapter so i'm going to share what i heard um at the end of this studies it's going to be brief but um i pray that you open up your spiritual ears and that you cleave on to this truth okay for those who have who god has chosen for himself all right so um ephesians chapter one Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Okay, we thank the Father for that. Remember that, brethren. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Hold fast to that, brethren, to the depths of your heart. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. God is good. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. Okay, we're not rejected. We're, we are accepted. This is why I said we must go over this chapter. This chapter has so many valuable points that we need to cleave on to and hold on to, especially when we take upon our full armor because the enemy will come against you hard especially with this chapter and i contest to that after i read and studied it <clears throat> the enemy has something to say um verse 6 to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved <clears throat> in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins According to the riches of his grace. Hold fast to that verse because this is what the enemy had attacked or tried to come against. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. A lot of brethren struggle with that to where they allow the enemy to deceive them. As far as understanding that they've been redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ and their sins have been forgiven. As long as they remain in the truth, walk in the truth, being led by the Holy Spirit. And if we do fall, Jesus forgives us. If we confess it, wholeheartedly confess it. Having a desire not to dwell in it or to go back in it jesus forgives us okay in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace it's grace okay god forgives us under this grace wherein he had abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will hear the mystery of the will of god brethren and I pray that you hold on to it according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. 
Okay, this is why I said we don't frustrate the grace of God. Don't frustrate it. Let it be. This is what his will is. Let it be and let us just thank him as we continue to live and walk in the truth. If we stumble with our whole hearts, we confess our sins to Jesus. And he is just and faithful according to his word. We go back and have him, even though he remembered, even though he knowed, No, we know he said we go back to him to tell him what he said lord you said if i confess my sins and which i do you are just you are faithful you are faithful to forgive me and i'm sorry i don't want to do it anymore i uh, uh sever it from me i turn away from me give me the power to turn and he will forgive us no matter what the enemy say Walk by faith, not by sight, not by feelings, okay? We live on that word, the word which came out of his mouth. It's a, you said, God, you said. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So this is God's plan. This is God's purpose for us to be conformed. And he helps us through his spirit. He helps us through his spirit because it is His. it was his purpose. It was his will before the foundation of the world. He already knew who was going to be with him. Okay, this is why we don't frustrate his grace. Allow his grace to be. Thank him for his grace. Continue to walk in the truth. If you fall, ask for forgiveness. God is just and faithful to forgive you. The enemy don't want you to know that. Because I studied this thing hard for a few days. And he came against it. Okay, and now we know the enemy is a liar. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together. This is when the Lord comes back. He got some of the saints that are in heaven. He comes back with the saints, verse 10, and then he sends forth his angels to gather his elect from the four corners of the world. His elect, they have already been chosen from the foundation of the world. Okay, his elect is going through a boot camp. His elect is going through fiery trials. His elect is being saved from their sins. Though they stumble, though they fall, though they go through so much trials and tribulation, persecution, God has pre predestined them already. This is why we fall on his grace. We hold fast to his truth and be sure we walking in it. Just because if we believe that we elect the elect, that don't give us a license to go purposely sin because we say, oh, we're the elect. God is going to come get me anyways. We don't frustrate the grace. We thank him for that. And we're rejoicing in that, happy in that. Thank him every day for that when you wake up in the morning, throughout your day, even when you go to bed. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace. I'm not going to frustrate your grace. No devil, no demon, no principality, no power, no, nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus and whom God had pre predestined. He foreseen it. He foreknew it. He's going to make these things come to pass for his own glory, for his own purpose. Y'all know, brother, we know how much God loves his reputation. We know how much our father loves his name. He will purpose it if he purposed it. Okay. So this is when he sends forth his angels to gather the, the elect from all four corners of the world. Why? Because his will is 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 uh, coming to fruition according to what he wanted to do. Remember, it is his will. We said, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done in this earth. Okay. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. So this is already ours. We just need to continue. Continue in that faith. Continue in the walk. All right. Continue. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. The kingdom of heaven is being prepared as we speak, brethren. Jesus said to his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I come back, I'm going to take you to be with me. That you may be where I am. All, predest all predestined, all predetermined. 
I didn't choose. Just like the Lord said to the disciples, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I chose you. Why do you think some people have favor in this life? God is working in their life, near to their life, loving on them. Okay? This is why you have this special love that people don't understand. When you glory in Him, you listening to worship music, and you just are um, fond of God, worshiping Him, seeing Him to be most precious, most precious than anything in this world, and you're crying, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit. A lot of people don't see that. A lot of Christians don't see that. They don't see that. They don't understand because they're just under a re under religion. It's dead. It's dead. The Holy Spirit revives us. That our spirit connects with the spirit of God and his spirit dwells in us. He revives us and enlightens our eyes to the truth of his glory. It is eternal life to even know God. If you know no God, if you know no Jesus, that is eternal life. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of what his own will. So when we know the Lord is with us. We just thank him. Just thank him every day. Give glory and honor to his name. Spend time with him. Don't neglect him. Thank him and rest in his grace through faith. For us to know all of these things, it makes you want to do good works. It makes you want to love people. It makes you want to give your life for people. And to tell people about the Lord for what the Lord is doing on our behalf. If that ain't love, I don't know what love is. Period. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Okay, so the father trusted in the son when he sent him that the son would fulfill his very own will. And that is to come and die for us, being an atonement for us, that he may pave the way for us to come to the Father, to unite and restore our relationship with the Father, which was severed in the Garden of Eden. So Christ gave his life for a ransom for us, that we may be reconciled to our Father. This is the Father's will. The Father loves us. He has always wanted to be with us. I mean, if you read in the book of Revelation, it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God. And this is what he always wanted. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. And he will dwell with them. He will be their God. And they will be his people. He has always wanted that. He wants to be in amongst his children. And Christ made that of Christ made that possible because he laid down his life. All right. Not only did he lay down his life, his blood was shed atoning for our sins and future sins and people that will come in the future. To come to Christ. He not only did that. But he taught us the ways of God. Like I was discussing with my sister the other day. I said sis we got to really open our eyes. That we not get caught up in the ways of this world. Because the ways of this world is backwards. The ways of this world is not the will of God. It's not the ways of God. If we understand that we would never get caught up in this stuff. Okay, Jesus came to show us the right way to live, the right mindset, the right ways, the right deeds. This life is not the ways of God. Our minds were distorted and deceived and many are deceived, especially those within the church. 
for one to profess themselves to be believers and all they do is attend church read their bible but there's no personal relationship with the father personal relationship with jesus to where you know know them i was discussing with my sister and we agreed on this i said sis a person can't profess themselves to be a believer said they never hear from christ that they literally never hear his voice that is impossible to say oh i'm a christian like well okay do you hear from jesus does jesus talk to you does the father talk to you they said no god don't talk to nobody that person does not know know the father that person is not a child of god we look from the beginning from genesis where abel knew god enoch knew god noah knew god abraham moses aaron miriam they knew god god is not shy to have a relationship with us to where he speaks to us and many of us who hear from the Lord we're not crazy this is normal but God stays away from those who ain't trying to seek him just like he say if you seek me with your whole heart you will find me the reason why people don't hear from God they're not seeking him okay they're worried about the things of this world they're not seeking him and neither are the pastors teaching them you need to hear from God how do you know what life that you're living if you're even living it according to your according to his will if you're not seeking him if this is false of what i say what did jesus say in the uh, new testament he said he that loves me he will keep my sayings he will keep my words and what did he say after that my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our home with him this is the very words that come out of the mouth of christ if any man loves me he will keep my sayings he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our home with him so for the father and the son to do that through the holy spirit that lets us know who we are we know no god we know no jesus for those who say well i don't hear from god but i'm a christian i don't hear from god but i go to church i attend church I read my Bible, I sing the hymns, I'm part of the choir. That don't mean jack, brethren. Do you hear from Jehovah? Do you hear from Jesus? No. Well, that would, well, the scriptures would be false then. That's letting us know that they don't love Jesus. Neither do they keep his word. But the Father loves them and wants them to come to the acknowledgement of their truth. We have to understand that the true believers in these last days knows God, knows Jesus. We're not alienated from him. He is not alienated from, him, uh, from us. We know him and that is eternal life. And that is through the Holy Ghost. So when you begin to understand these things, you got to look around yourself when people profess themselves to be Christian. And you can judge their fruit by their fruit. You can tell whether they know no God, whether they know no Jesus. By their fruit. If you know no God, you know no Jesus and you know they are holy, righteous and upright. You wouldn't be dressing no kind of way, brethren. You wouldn't be talking no kind of way if his spirit dwell in you. And you talk to him every day and he talks to you. Whether it be verbally, audibly, in your spirit, literally, not just something that you made up. Oh, I think God said that. No, God literally said that. 
There's a time I sat down. It was a while back before I uh, just gave away my TV. I was about to sit down and watch television. The Lord literally spoke to me and said, why don't you go and intercede in prayer instead? I said, that's not that. I know that wasn't me because at that time, that was not my desire. I wanted to watch television. But then I had a, I had a decision whether I was going to listen to the Lord or not. And I shut off the TV and went into my room and interceded in prayer. Okay. This is normal. It's not something that just happened. You're like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Normal to hear from the Lord. Okay. He's pre predestined those who he had chosen from the foundation of the world. And those who he had chosen from the foundation of, of the world, do you really think that he will remain alienated from them? No. He will reveal himself. He will manifest himself. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ and whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, this is when the father and the son comes to dwell in you. He said, I knock at the door. This is your heart. If you hear me, open the door. That I may sup with you and you with me. This is for real. This is when you start hearing him. This is when he starts talking to you. And you can talk to him back. And he responds. Okay, brethren? Dreams, audibly, in your spirit, whatever. And at times, many times, you can sense his spirit. When you're at home, wherever you are, at times you can sense his spirit. Because your spirit is made open to sense. You can sense demonic spirits in the area. You can sense the spirit of God. You just begin to sense things in the spirit because you have the spirit in you. You're just a spiritual person now. But before, it was almost impossible. Well, it was impossible. You wouldn't even know evil around you. You wouldn't even know presence of God around you. Okay? But we also trust in Christ. Let us remain trusting in Christ. And believing in him. When we hear the gospel. When we first heard the gospel to repent. To be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That we may receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. And the word of truth is the gospel of our salvation. Let us not neglect that. In whom also after you believed. So you believed the gospel. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So every promise that we discussed it earlier in this verse, it is for us. The devil will try to rattle you up and try to get you to think all type of other ways. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. This is why we take on our full armor because this is what he's going to try to do. We got the uh, helmet of salvation. This is your salvation. He will attack your mind. There's a time where I studied scriptures after I fell asleep. I knew it wasn't the voice of the Lord. The devil told me straight up, you're not going to heaven. That's exactly how this, he said it nonchalantly. You're not going to heaven. The enemy don't want you to know the truth. Okay. Many have already be, been pre, predestinated. No principality can take us and snatch us from the hand of our God. But he will mess with you. The thing is we need to hold on to the truths. We hit him with that double-edged sword. And we have our shield of faith. Which is thicker than two bricks. And probably thicker. And heavy is our shield of faith. Can't penetrate fiery darts from the enemy. We got to have our shield. If not, the devil will lie to us. Um... You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. OK, we hear that you are a purchased possession purchased by the blood of Jesus. All right. 
Devil has no ground, no say souls. We kill him with the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. I'm a purchased possession. Get out of here, Satan. The Holy Ghost defends this case, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory which is the glory of god through jesus wherefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all saints cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him we can pray that every day that we may have the spirit of wisdom okay and the revelation in the knowledge of god especially if we have a relationship with him we can do that and he will grant us these things this is where you increasingly begin to know know god like it says knowledge shall increase in the book of daniel we will begin to know know god more and more know know jesus more and more we ask for the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This is the life of Jesus Christ. The good in which he does. And the evil in which he rejects. This is to be in us. We are to know these things. And follow suit in these things. Alright brethren. We are to have understanding. This understanding is where you choose good and reject evil. Wisdom. Godly wisdom. Not like man's wisdom, not like the world's wisdom, godly wisdom that surpasses all wisdom in this earth. All right. People asking you for advice. Your advice ain't even in the ways of the world. It's above. It's at the throne of the most high God. People asking you questions. Oh, me and my boyfriend just got in an argument. Uh, I'm just trying to find a, what to do. You tell him straight up, you need to give your life to Jesus. That he may wash you clean of your unrighteousness. Because in his eyes, there's no such thing as boyfriend or girlfriend, but it's sin. You need to share in his holiness. My greatest advice for you, you may not want it. That's wisdom, brethren. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. If not, you're going to die in your sins. They're not looking for that. But we don't have the wisdom of this world. If they don't want my answer, you can go to another worldly person and they will give you what you want. And that's worldly, supposedly wisdom, which is false. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of God's calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So God is doing all of these things for us. Let us ponder. Let us meditate. Let us thank him. For all of these things are according to his very own will. And we know that his will will be accomplished according to what he wants to do. Let our eyes. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. And ask God for this enlightenment. That we may know more and more and more about him. And to draw more and more and more to him. Spend time with him. You can pray with him throughout your day. The more you spend time with the Lord. The more you will know him. And the more he will reveal. Things that you didn't know about him. About the future. Present. Those around you. It would be like you're already in heaven. You'd be like Enoch. Enoch walked with the Lord. You'd be like Abraham. Abraham knew God. And we are supposed to be the children of Abraham. We are supposed to be as Christ. Christ knew the Father. Close to the Father. Why can't we have that relationship? That is beyond me. So we got brethren supposedly in the churches alienated from god how are you a child of god you're alienated from him but if you seek him with all your heart with all your soul he said i'm going i will draw near to you if you do that because when we do that we let god know 
I'm interested in you. I want to know you. I want to know who you are. I want to talk to you. I leave this world alone. I really want to know you. And God will come to you and reveal himself. But he's not going to barge your life. Well, sometimes he comes to us and if we're living in sin, he begins to draw us to him. But when you seek him with all your heart, he you're basically saying that I want to know you. And then he comes and you know you begin to know him and develop a relationship. All right. So when a believer does not have that, that lets us know so much. That lets us know so much first. They don't care to know him. That lets me know also they don't care to repent. Because the gospel calls men to repent. If the gospel in which a person preaches does not include repentance, Repentance, casting away the old man that the new man may live and thrive, casting away the old conversation, the ways of the world, which is the deceitful desires of this world. It lets you know so much. Because you cannot cleave onto unrepentance. You cannot cleave onto the old man and have a, a seriously heart to heart relationship with God, for he is a holy God. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word? Who believe. Okay. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us? Who believe. How important it is to believe. And this belief is just not a mental belief. Your belief is actually expressed by power. Your belief is actually expressed by your life. Just as Apostle Paul said, uh, Christianity, I'm just summarizing it. It's not in word. It's not in word. You could say, oh, I believe. But he said it's not in word. It's in deed. It's in power. So your belief is really in power. You walk your belief. You live your belief. You live your faith. You live hope. And that's your true belief. Because many people, when Jesus comes back, they had a mental belief. But that belief was not uh, certified in power. Therefore, they're rejected. Okay? If this was visible... To where we can see in physical in a physical way someone that physically believed and walked in that belief. It wouldn't be a lot of people that believe. Let's just say that. Okay. According to the working of his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power. This is what we got to understand when the enemy trying to come to us with trickery. With fiery darts, with lies. These defeated foes have already defeated even their ringleader Satan, Lucifer, the devil, the serpent of old from the garden. God has set our Savior at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities, including Lucifer, in power, in might, and dominion, in every name that is named, not only in this earth, but also in that which is to come. And had put all things under his feet. Okay, this is for all devils that want to come up against us with lies. Fiery darts. We will remember that. Shield of faith. Thicker than two or more bricks. Heavy. Iron. Fiery darts can't penetrate that. And give him to be the head over all things to the church how powerful is that brethren to us and he is our head which is his body the church which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all 
So we are his body, his flesh and his bones. So everything that Christ had inherited from the Father, it is our ours. We don't walk in weakness in this world when we know that. This is why the enemy don't want you to know that. That we ought to walk in power and strength as Christ had walked this earth. It shouldn't be no it shouldn't be less than that. Just like he said, uh, we will do greater things that he did. Why? We are his body. We are of him. We're not alienated. We're not segregated. We're not second class citizens. We are the children of the most high. It's like in these last days, brethren will be doing exploits and some of them have already been doing exploits. But the enemy don't want you to know that. It's the truth that set us free. It's the truth that helps us to work in power no matter what the enemy says. The enemy knows, but the enemy don't want you to know. That's why he throw all types of worldly things in your way to keep you in blindness, keep you in front of the television, keep you, affirm, uh, and keep you with worldly people, keep you chasing money, keep you chasing, um, what is it, uh, what, what I was going to say, the things of this world, keep you in lust. Keep you in pornography and masturbation. Keep you in deception and lies and seduction. As long as he keep you in that, you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus. You don't know you a lion. You don't know you a lion. He's making you feel like you're some defenseless animal. A scary animal. A hyena. You're not a hyena. You're a lion. But this is how the enemy can play with your mind. We need to know the word of God, our double-edged sword. Remember that, brethren. Study Ephesians chapter 1. Now, as I was studying this, I don't know if it was just for one day. Um, I went to bed. And in my sleep, I heard the enemy say, Jesus can't save. And I, I remember hearing it. I don't know if it I don't yeah, I heard it to where he woke me to where he woke me up. And I just laid there. And I just thanked the Lord for the word. Cuz the thing is in these last days men and women are falling away from him because of these types of deception and it comes from the devil. It comes from demons. You're here in these last days seducing spirits. And these are seducing spirits. If you're not in the word, if you don't know the truth, if you're not empowered in Christ Jesus, the very lying words that came out of the mouth of this unclean, foul spirit, you would have believed. This is why a lot of people fall away thinking that faith in Christ, which God says this would be your righteousness. Our righteousness is our faith in Christ, not in the law. People will turn away from him and try to keep laws to justify their righteousness. Okay, that's exactly what that evil, unclean, foul spirit said. He said, Jesus cannot save. But look, we clearly read. This is why I wanted you to hold on to verse uh, 7. How can he not save? In whom we have redemption through his blood. That forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. This is what we need to hold on to. As we abide in him and his word abide in us. And continue unto the very end. And allow no one to take our crown. I just wanted to share that with y'all, brethren. I have other videos that I wanted to share with you all tomorrow um, that I was going over. But I just thought I'd put this one out because it was on my mind for some time, for a few days now. Y'all take care, brethren.